Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. As always, my name is Dr. Gleb Sapurski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. Today with me is Cesar Carvalho, who is the CEO of Jim Pass. We'll find out about Jim Pass later. But first, Cesar, I wanted to ask you about specifically well-being for remote workers and how it compares to in-office workers and hybrid ones. I know you just put out a report on well-being, and I want to learn a little bit more about the difference between remote workers, hybrid workers who are there in the office occasionally, and in-office workers and how they experience well-being. Well, very good, Gleb. Thank you so much uh, for hosting me. It's a pleasure to be here with you, uh, especially discussing such an important topic. Um, and you know, like the question is very interesting. You know, what what's the state of well-being for different types mm -hmm. of workers? You know, the the reality and 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 the data of this research that we did is has shown is that we're in a crisis of well-being, and and it's a. a, a a crisis that's affecting everyone, people that are working remotely and also people that are working in person in different offices and etc. Mm -hmm. And and the results are 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 alarming, I would say. You know, like uh, people are disengaged. Uh, Sixty percent of the employees say that they're disengaged at work, and twenty percent share that they feel feel miserable at work. Mm -hmm. And I, I think. Uh, the separation between uh, people that are working at the office versus remote, um, the, it, it puts some light on something that we have seen already in the past, which is like that this relationship between um, life and work before, mm -hmm. it used to be more compartmentalized. Like there were people that said, no, I'm trying to strive this balance between uh, my life and my work. And what we're seeing is, for those that have gone on hybrid or remote, the lines are much more blurred now than they mm. were before. So um, it's 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 equally concerning, but mm -hmm. the elements are somewhat different uh, between the two. Um, okay. and, and and to me, that is a, a very important topic for us to discuss and double click here. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. I'd like to learn a little bit more about how to help with well-being of people who are in the office, fully office-centric, Monday, 9 to 5, people who are in the office occasionally, one, two days in the office, three days, and fully remote workers. Let's dive into that and tell me about each group and how to best support their well-being. Very good. So um, my my... To, to start with, I, I believe that um, everyone, regardless of their time, they, they, they have different needs, right? So there are mm -hmm. folks that see well-being as like being physically active. There are folks that mm -hmm. see well-being as being close to their loved ones. And there are also folks mm -hmm. who see well-being as like driving meaning from the work that they're doing every single day and building great mm -hmm. relationships no matter where they are. Um, so let's dive into the differences mm -hmm. for people that are working from nine to five at the office and then are co commuting back home uh, for you know, like every single night and then for the weekends. Re it's really, really important to make sure that they have access to well-being resources that can be um, used either on the way on the commute for, to work mm -hmm. or after right after work so it's very important mm -hmm. to find um for an example for physical activity partners for gyms studios classes it's very important to have classes in those locations but also mm -hmm. to have classes um where people live so they can go if there are significant others and potentially exercise on weekends as well uh, mm -hmm. the other part is that for those for those folks life is more compartmentalized still. Like mm -hmm. you have your life at work, you have your life at home. But for what happens after nine, like it's still a little bit blurry and that and that's where this group is gonna uh, is gonna mix with folks that are still on a hybrid routine. Uh, but 
my view is for folks that are at the office, <laughs> the companies do need to look at the communities around the office. They do need to look at the time spent commuting and for what uh, the experiences are uh, at the workplace specifically. Okay. For people that are on a hybrid schedule, yeah. I think the secret is making sure that every time someone's heading to the office, it is for a specific purpose and that you're mm -hmm. gathering all the resources that that person needs to be effective at the time that they're there. Mm. It, doesn't, it, it makes no sense to have people be at the office three days per week if people are going on different times and teams are sure. not taking the time to meet and collaborate. And then for those, the importance of group activities is mm -hmm. even higher. So mm. making sure that for the three days, you're making those three days really, really meaningful in nature. You're having people invest time, not only to work together, but also to build those relationships and potentially, you know, do an activity together, like um, mm -hmm. discuss and, and etc. So I, I think there's a lot there. For the fully <laughs> remote workers, that's to me where the most challenging situation is, and, and mostly mm -hmm. because companies are still learning um, mm -hmm. uh, how to manage it. And um, everyone, I think, believes the future of work is more, more remote than in person, mm -hmm. is more hybrid than in person. Yeah. The problem is getting there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is the present. And, and, and to me, I think companies for remote workers thinking about their well-being is where they need to be really, really thoughtful about um, what are the processes we're going to put around the work-life balance for those employees mm -hmm. and, and how we're going to make sure like that, even though they're not connected to the office, that we're still building culture, that we're still mm -hmm. showing them the meaning of what they're doing. And that we're still providing the same level of benefits that, for an example, an in-company gym could get, that an in-company mm. meditation room could bring to the employees, that we're bringing those examples also to people mm. that are geographically spread. Mm. And that, to me, shines light on you know, like what are the benefits for this new reality? What type, are the type of things that we can bring from a well-being point of view to folks mm. that are spread it all over the place. Yeah, definitely very important to do social activities with remote workers. So something that I help my clients do transitioning to permanent post-work arrangements is arrange some activities that are going to be including remote workers. So for example, virtual escape rooms or some other fun social activities, gaming, various, you know, Fortnite, whatever people like to do that include mm -hmm. people who are going to be fully remote. Uh, what are other kinds of activities, social activities that are going to be inclusive of people who are fully remote that would facilitate their well-being? Yeah, so so to me, it, you can call it, I, I think it's too social, but it's not necessarily connecting employees with other employees on a remote basis, but giving those remote employees the tools to get immersed mm -hmm. on their local communities with their family members in a meaningful okay. way. So think about this, you know, like on the physical activity space, there are more than 2000 different types of activities. There's mm -hmm. yoga, there's the regular gym, there's, there are 50 different types of yoga, actually. There's Pilates, pickleballs sure. growing super fast and et cetera. Yeah, and, it's a fun game. <laughs> and, and it's, a, it's a fun game and it's like, it's like Netflix and there are many series coming every time mm -hmm. and then new episodes and people get excited about trying those different things. Yeah. And the employee base of companies these days are getting more and more diverse, right? And people have different tastes. And yeah. as an employer, making sure you're making available to those employees all the possible resources for them mm -hmm. to pick and choose and try what's mm -hmm. best for them and what works best for that local community. And, and making sure you're incentivizing this as much as possible by including the family members and giving people mm -hmm. time to, to do those things. makes That makes a huge, huge difference. What mm -hmm. we see from some of the clients that we work with is that companies that have 2,000 employees, they see those 2,000 employees visiting 
five different, 5,000 different partners. So more than 2,000, more than two partners per employee every single month. And, and that's magical because it really meets their employees, whatever they are, and with the activities they would most like to do, you know? Yeah. Well, let's go in depth into a case study that you know yourself, Gym Pass itself, the company. Tell me a little bit more about what you do for your employees, because I'm sure it's the best practice for what others should do for their employees. How do you support your employees who are coming in? I don't know what your structure is, hybrid, remote, office-centric. How do you support different employees in different categories? What do you specifically do? Very good. Um, we're a remote-first company. Uh, and because we're a global company, we have offices in 11, uh, 11 countries. Mm -hmm. We were doing conference calls even when we were office-centric office, office -centric before the pandemic. So mm -hmm. there would be it, it would be a normal day for a leader to go into the office and spend 70% of the time in conference calls with people from other countries. Um, and to us, you know, like, I, I think we made a commitment as a company to be you know, like the best company on the well-being space for employees. And we try to exercise well-being for our employees in four different dimensions. You know? okay. There's one dimension, which is providing them with all the tools uh, mm -hmm. for them to reach better well-being. We subsidize access to 10,000 different gyms and studios in the US. We subsidize mm -hmm. access to more than 30 different well being apps to our employees. Mm -hmm. And we give a wellness coach to every single employee who wants to get, mm -hmm. to receive guidance on how to better explore their mm -hmm. well being journey with their family members, no matter where they are. To me, we do it out of altruism, but also out of business interest. Like it's great mm -hmm. for the business to have people active at a great state of well-being. Um, mm -hmm. It helps our bottom line. It helps with engagement. It helps with uh, to reduce turnover. And I can talk more about that as well. Mm -hmm. But that's the first principle. The second principle is we want people to be productive at work. We don't want them to be spending hours and hours in unproductive meetings and not be contributing meaningfully mm -hmm. to the mission of the company. And then we created uh, uh, what we call the gym pass operating system, which kind of regulates you know, like how people engage in different initiatives and what types mm -hmm. of calls and initiatives people should participate on. Um, and, and, and to me, the main purpose there is to making sure that one, we are delegating activities properly to teams and we're empowering people to make the decision and to control the destiny of that specific initiative going forward. Mm. Third piece is we are doing a ton of training because well-being is mostly seen as a benefit. But to me, well-being is the exercise of leadership. Mm. And we're training leaders on how to create a culture of well-being as they're managing their teams on a day-to-day -day basis. A few tips, letting people take breaks from time to time. Mm -hmm. Check doing checkpoints from time to time to see how people are doing. And of course, having the flexibility to potentially let people take a day off and et cetera. Third, giving feedback to people, helping them develop along mm -hmm. the way and, and, and making sure that you're being mindful and purposeful on you know, like creating the, 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 the development opportunities for every single person in your team. So a lot of investment in people. And the fourth one is when we do in person, we're very mm -hmm. intentional about what mm -hmm. we do together as a team. Uh, we're encouraging every single team to meet in person at least once per quarter. And yeah. the idea is not to discuss the business when we meet in person. The idea is to build bonds, is to connect, is to build empathy, is to talk about what mm -hmm. worked well and not worked well, because we don't want any decision to wait until that specific moment. Sure. And we want to operate as efficiently as possible once we break from that specifically gathering and then um, and then pushing back uh, and people are working back remote. So if you look at those four things, you know, like mm -hmm. the structure that we had, we had to have in place to enable all of it was a very strong network of strategic HR business partners for every mm -hmm. single manager and leader at the company. And in a way that mm -hmm. we're proactively managing 
people's well-being and it's linked even on how productive effective we are in delegating work and letting people be able to have autonomy on making the right decisions hmm. let's circle back to number one the numbers the business case i saw from your report that 85 percent of employees reported they would have better retention if employers cared about their well-being tell me a little bit more about the business case for well-being by the numbers according to your report but other things as well that you find that's very good so to me the, the first thing is this huge number of people that are saying that well-being is really really important for them when deciding to stay at a given company mm -hmm. and i think what people are realizing is that because life and work are blurred and since you spend so many hours we spend so many hours working every mm -hmm. single day that if that component of well-being is not there you know, like almost it's like nothing else matters you know and and, and to me that's shining light on the importance uh, of well-being to everyone and how and how critical it is for companies to tackle those those challenges head on the second thing is regarding salary Four out of five employees said that well-being is as important as salary for them on a day-to-day -day basis. And that surprised mm -hmm. me a lot because I would have guessed like that it, it was it would have been a much lower percentage, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 to me, this is a thing that like is 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 the silver bullet that you know, like CEOs, leaders, board members are not tapping into yet. Everyone's thinking about the salary bands, if people are where people are compared to the market, people look at salaries to measure their career progress. They looked at salaries to measure their career progress. There's legislation talking about trans transparency of pay mm -hmm. these days, but we're actually not talking at all about which companies are great at well-being for their employees and which companies are not. There are mm -hmm. many technology companies that are helping employees find out like what companies are paying for different roles and etc. No one's talking about which companies are great at well-being, which leaders are great at well-being. Mm. And they should be. And I think this is a huge opportunity for differentiation mm. in the future. And companies that mm -hmm. decide to embrace this sooner, they will benefit from a, a significant period of competitive advantage. Mm. But then let's talk about the case of well-being, you know? Yeah. Um, Companies that invest in well-being for their employees, they get to triple the number of active people they have mm -hmm. in their call and engaged people. That has a direct implication for retention. Mm -hmm. We have seen that employees that are at a great state of well-being are 40% more likely to stay at their current employer. And there's a huge cost around hiring more people, ramping them up, mm -hmm. training them for them to get up to speed. And make no mistake, everyone hates losing great talent, right? Sure. The second thing is on healthcare costs. Uh, mm -hmm. People who are active, who exercise once per week, they spend on average 25% less on healthcare than people who are not mm -hmm. active. There's a clear bottom line impact there. Mm -hmm. And in addition to those, like the number of sick days you take the, the better decisions you make by being in a great state of well-being and not tired, burned out, or depressed, you know, like it's it's something no one questions. You know, like if <laughs> well-being was a pill, and by taking it every day you would be at a great state of well-being, everyone would take that pill every single <laughs> day. Sure. And while there is no pill, there are a set of practices that every single company can implement to have similar effects and those effects are worth it. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us about Gym Pass itself, what the, how your company can help other companies facilitate the well-being of their employees? What do you do, in other words? Very good. So we're a technology platform that is creating a benefit that's connecting the employees of our clients to mm -hmm. thousands of gyms, studios, apps, trainers all over the, the the US and in 10 other countries. And the principle is that by combining all those different 
well-being resources by combining a meditation app with the gym next door, with a studio class, and mm-hmm. with a wellness coach to guide you through this well-being journey. And by making the price of that service be half of what the price would be for someone to just go and use one of those partners, mm-hmm. that we can dramatically increase the number of active people within the the population of our of our clients and by having many more active people at a great state of well-being we get all the positive effects that we talked about here Mm -hmm. so i created gym pass 10 years ago and i have been signing gyms studios apps to make sure that we have a state-of-the-art platform Mm -hmm. for every single employee to use and the best thing for companies is that there is a product for everyone. Like there are free well-being apps. There are gyms, studios that are included in a plan that costs just $10. Mm -hmm. It's accessible to everyone and includes gyms, studios that would normally cost $40. So four times more than what the employees are actually paying. But like to people who want it, there are, there is access to super premium gyms, boutique studios, one-on-one personal training sessions as well. The principle (laughs) is the same. Bundling all those different services (laughs) into one single membership that would cost always 50% less than the price of a single partner. (laughs) What I'm I'm passionate about is serving everyone and making (laughs) sure that our clients are getting access to all these partners no matter what the new fitness trend is. Mm-hmm. When Zumba was the biggest thing, we had all the Zumba uh, studios, all the Zumba classes on our platform. We still have them. Uh, and then everyone was talking about CrossFit. Our clients got immediate access to all the CrossFit studios as they were growing. And then Pickleball now is a big thing. And then we're adding the platform. So the benefit keeps improving over time because we keep adding mm-hmm better partners for every single employee to use. Excellent. All right. This was a lovely conversation. Is there anything else that you haven't yet shared that you think our audience would value knowing about well-being, about gym pass, anything that we've discussed? Yeah. So the, the, the only thing to emphasize is that there is this myth of trying to pursue work-life balance Mm-hmm. as if work and life were separate things that are competing against each other at odds uh, against each other and, and 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 that what we have seen and the pandemic has only accelerated it and the more the hybrid work and the more remote first workers exist and like the more they accelerate the strength is that those two are connected mm-hmm. and and what companies should strive for is not to guide their employees to have better work-life balance and investing on work places, work benefits. What companies should be doing is looking at work-life wellness and how can you bring Mm. great well-being for people no matter where they are and and, and, and not separating one or the other because that's how we're going to get real engagement and that's how we're going to change the game in terms of um, getting employees engaged and have uh, happy and healthy. So well, that's a wonderful note, Tom. Then thank you very much, Cesar. It was a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Glad. The pleasure was mine. All right, everyone, and I hope you, the uh, listeners and viewers, have enjoyed this episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. As always, make sure to leave a review to help other people discover the show and to help us have the valuable feedback we need to improve the show. And make sure that you subscribe to the show wherever you check this out. And please tell your family and friends. It's always valuable to help them discover the show. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. In the meantime, the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends. <laughs>